You begin to ask your, uh, yourself a very big question. How has the Buhari government performed now that they have a mandate for another four-year term? Uh, well, we've been setting an agenda and we told you uh, to join the conversation. Let us know what Buhari must uh, do. Hashtag what Buhari must do and hashtag second term agenda ahead of the 20, 29 May 2019 inauguration where the government has said uh, that it will be a low-key celebration, but they will focus uh, their energy in celebrating democracy day, which they said will happen on the 12th of June. Let's get uh, talking, everyone. Now, we'll be looking at what the Minister of Education said. He said, look, I take responsibility. We've failed in the area of enrolling out of school children. And the Minister of Health, you heard what he said. What about the issues of economy? You heard what has happened. The GDP figures, growth, but a slow one. The, uh, the CBN also came out with an NPL uh, after the NPC meeting. They did nothing. Nothing touched. Everything remained. What other perspective? Is our economy better on the Buhari government? Let's get talking, everyone. I have joining me. Mr. Tokwe Faswa, the presidential candidate and the national chairman of the All Nigeria Renewal Party, NRP, and also Mr. Nia Kinshiju, he is the chairman of the Buhari Media Organization. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Uh, how does this come to you, for example, Mr. Faswa? Because I looked at your manifesto in areas of health, and if you look at it, in fact, what the WHO, what the United Nations speak about on the issues of health and uh, the global standard of the benchmark of what should be spent on health education, which in any climb, developmental uh, 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 indices relies on these basic sectors, education and health. The minister said, we failed on the enrollment of out-of-school children. How would you assess the Buhari government in the last four years in some of these key areas? Oh, well, thank you. You know, I, I think we've got to the point where, I mean, we're tired of lampooning. You know, I mean... Uh, uh, most of the ministers will be honest to themselves and they will admit that they actually failed. Um, but not only the ministers failed, even the citizens of this country, they failed. Uh, we all failed. You know, I mean, for example, uh, given the chance for change, they chose continuity. So that itself is a failure. If, if all the ministers are saying, it's just logic, you know, philosophy 101. If all the ministers say we failed... And indeed, they failed. At least the ones that are well, at least the ones that are honest. Is only the minister of at least the ones that are honest. Are thirteen point two million children out of school. The president himself admits, and even recently, the president said, "Look, he's not happy seeing all those children on the streets with tattered clothes and bowls in their hands." And he said, "Look, the, the elite. He said, we the elites have failed. They the elites have failed those children. And he, you know, what he was saying at that point in time was actually to say, look." There's a need for an elite consensus. There's nowhere there's no poverty in the world. Everywhere there's poverty. But what the elite in those countries have managed to do is to come to a point to say, listen, uh, enough already. We know we want to make money. We want to like, have so much. But at the end of the day, there's a limit to what you can have. But what about these people? We don't have to push them to the level where they become dehumanized and then they come after us. You can see that the Senate is talking of revolution. Uh, the President of Africa is talking of revolution. Uh, you know, Melaya is talking of... Everybody seems to be talking about revolution all at once. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we, we needn't have got to that point. So the point now is that, look, we have got to failure beyond, of a, a system it's, it's a that this government failure. inherited or this failure Absolutely. of this government. Absolutely. It is part of that. You know, in economics, we don't, usually, uh, we don't usually base our analysis on only one factor. When you base your analysis on only one variable, then you're going to have a huge... Uh, what you call error term, you know. So in, in other words, you know, and then again in economics, it's also very interesting. We have what they call the lag effect, that whatever it is you're doing today is also dependent on what happened 15, 20 years ago. So, we, you see, we have a, a culture of that lack of elite consensus, that culture of greed, the hunter-gatherer idea of people wanting to get everything at the same time. Mm. And, you know, that inability to imagine collective development. That's why we're here. So, of course... I would say that the Buhari government, you know, Ms. my Egmont uh, is here, Mr. Takishi is here. You know, I don't want to lampoon the Buhari that much. You know, I mean, the old man has done whatever it is he could do. Some of us could have done a lot better. We have more energy to come into the space, a great level of imagination and vision. And on, we also understand what's going on in the other parts of the world. 
But, okay, it is what it is. We're not politically strong enough. It's there and all of that. We can't say only Buhari has messed up the system. But, I mean, by their own admission, they didn't move on time. All of the issues are there. 91 million people in extreme poverty. Growth rates are 2.01%. What that means is that, you know, you have to add the, the inflation level to the population growth level. Inflation at 11.2%, population growth at 32 that's 14.4%. Mm -hmm. Back out 2.01%, we have, we actually, we have a negative growth of 12%. And mind you, and let me give you a few statistics. India is growing at about 7 to 7.5%, at a $3 trillion economy. U.S. is growing at 4 point, from 4.1%, 4.2% a 17 trillion economy. China is growing at 6.5%, a 15 trillion economy. Here in Africa, Senegal, Ethiopia, Ghana, all of these guys are growing at 8%, 7%. We have no excuse whatsoever we to grow at, at You know, I always said it. We should actually our see... Our growth is... They say 2.01%. 2.01. Yeah. used to be 2.3%. It receded to 2.01. You see, people are even, some people, some um, so-called experts, you know, there's no experts in economics, I must tell you anyway. But people say, some experts, I read in the punch today, that some experts say, oh, Nigeria is going back into recession. No. You can't say because of that, the Nigeria is going into recession. As a matter of fact, what we have here, we've always had, is the symptoms of an economic depression. What happened in, right. the, in, in, in the rest of the world in the 30s, high inflation, high uh, employ, unemployment, High crime rates, you know, high poverty, high illiteracy is what we have here. And I say that those are the symptoms of an economic You depression. think the Buhari government has the capacity to fix all of this? Well, I hope they will listen. I hope they will... Do they have, have the capacity? How they will listen, because they, they can find the capacity. You know, the, the current lineup as it is may not have the capacity. You know, some of the guys are good, you know, fine. You know, but look, the, 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 the enormity... You see, and also there's what they call, the, the so-called, what we like to call in Nigeria, the political will. For example, I, I've always said... Let, let, just I'm, a moment. Let okay. me allow Mr. King okay. to come I'll in come here. Uh, you've right. heard uh, the analysis, and perhaps sometimes it's always very good to hear from the opposition what they are thinking. Maybe you're overwhelmed. Is your party overwhelmed? Definitely not. Uh, we, we have uh, an environment that was uh, not particularly structured. I mean, it's thankfully, uh, Tope had also made mention of that. What you do in the past would always measure up to what you are doing in, in your present. Uh, what, what the present government is trying to do is to actually restructure the Nigerian economy as it were. We were running a less fair economy before. We, I tell people that we lacked ideological undercurrent for, our, for most of our economic policies coming into 2015. And it, is, it was not you know, uh, surprising that we went into a recession because for every time we had a boom, uh, uh, that's the crude oil uh, uh, boom, we always had increased GDP figures. But because of the nature of our boom, it is exclusive. It is not inclusive. It is, we are talking of, uh, of a sector that merely controls uh, just about 8 to 10 percent of, of our economy. So, the, of course, and it's also a boom and bust circle. And unfortunately, we did not do anything, you know, with, uh, with those uh, boom periods. We had about three boom periods between 1999 and 2015. We did not do anything with it, you know, either in terms of the, the manufacturing sector, in terms of the agricultural sector and all that. But did your time, government, the APC government, move fast enough? It is not, you agree you, that you do not, you do that not, you do not, run, not, into, you do not run into a rot and start moving fast. You... In fact, in doing business, with the, the kind first, of problem the Nigeria faces, the first you thing you enough. needed to do in doing business is to do your feasibility study. These are very critical mm -hmm. issues, very and one of the reasons why channels television are taking it upon itself to set agenda for this government. Look, government cannot forget where it needs to go, and it cannot also uh, forget where it's coming from. So history and projection are very important. And those are, that's the reason why we are putting it in perspective. So whatever you may be watching, everyone, hashtag what Buari must do. Let's set the agenda for the government. At least the government is there for you. Hashtag second term agenda. Let's get back to the conversation. And so you were saying the criticism against this government is that it did not move fast. Yeah, I'm the question it. will be in the coming four years, does it have the capacity to be able to do that which... The people, our uh, average person on the street, wanted to do. I think the government has the capacity, and it has shown really. Yeah, well, some critics may say it's slow, but the truth is that we have recorded growth. We had gone into 
an expected recession. Anybody that was voting the Nigerian economy between 2013 and 2014 would expect naturally that we're going to go into a recession. We had, we had a GDP that was 5% in 2014. It was 2.3%, I mean 2.4% by uh, June 20, uh, 2016, uh, 2015, you know. So uh, the only difference was that it was not consecutive. We could have done, run into that recession. Now, I do not also believe you know, that uh, the government did not take off early enough and fast enough. I, I, I think there was a need for a cool-headed approach to to an issue of crisis. When your house we went, is under fire, we went, we when, went, you, when, when you have you, fire in your house, you, would you be cool if you have, and calm If you too? have fire in your house, you must also look at where you have your fire extinguisher. You don't keep running around for you to even know where your fire extinguisher is. Would you was. also take enough time to allow the fire to burn before you put it out? If you don't have your fire extinguisher or your fire hose, there was no way you were going to effectively burn, I mean, uh, uh, contain the fire. So the important thing is to sit back and determine the measure you want to deploy. And I, I mean, that is what we have seen. We have seen measures deployed. We had gone into a recession in 2015. And of course, within 16 months, we came out of that recession and we are on a growth trajectory. A number of countries have not been able to do that. You know, even uh, our, peer, our peer countries, as it were. The, the question, you know? Mr. Akinshiju, is that you are talking about the capacity of your government. The big question is, uh, your government said, look, we want to diversify the economy. Uh, for example, and I give you an example of some of the, you know, your, the Minister of Education said, we failed in the area of enrollment. We, we promised that we we're going to take children out of school. Your government promised that you are going to regular, re, regularize the budget cycle. We have not seen that happen. Your government has said that you're going to make sure that we don't rely on oil. As far as we know now, we still rely on oil. These are some of the issues on the table. Can the average Nigeria believe your, your government and your party again? Thank you. The matter of enrollment. I, I, I do not also subscribe to the fact that the Minister of Education is, I mean, failed. No, he did not fail. No, he, 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 he said, said it by he himself. He set a target. He set a target. He could not make the target. But it's not as if he did not achieve a certain part of uh, the target as it were. Three million children were moved out of, uh, out of that population, you know, as a, as a direct result of the free, uh, free meal uh, uh, feeding in schools. Three million. Uh, it, we had never achieved that, at least not over the last 10 years, you know. So if we, if we are able to move three million children out of, I mean, who were out of school, back to school, for whatever reason, it's an achievement. It may not have achieved 15 million, you know, but we had three million. Yeah, I mean, now, uh, and for me, yeah. and I said, see, if you don't, the, the, the capacity to grow, and of course, the momentum of growth is determined on the ground you are standing on. I mean, Mr. Akinshi, I see Mr. Fasu are laughing uh, when you're mentioning mm -hmm. some figures, and I, and I wonder why the, the smiles uh, are coming at, at those intervals. Uh, the big question is, who do you give credit to this government? The, the kind of progress that they've made that we have seen uh, the government uh, said they took the, uh, Nigeria out of recession. Credit, isn't it? Uh, school feeding program, we could see it. Credit, isn't it? Could you give this government some credit? I, I will, actually. I will. Um, in terms of the recession, they actually deepened the recession before the, we now clambered out of the recession. And we went into recession, like Ibe Kachiku will say, oil took us into recession, oil took us out of it and all of that. Uh, I was still in that oil, you know, in that realm right now. Uh, we could do a lot better. Well, during my campaign, I, I did a lot of research and I came up with this idea that, look, I looked at the price of, of palm oil. I mean, the CBN is taking it all up right now without even acknowledging where the idea came from. It was <laughs> profoundly my idea. Mm. I did a lot of analysis on that and I said, look, there's a lot going on in this sector. It was even a movie I was watching that, that I got that idea. It's called Miss Sloan. Anyone that knows it, because in that movie... Um, they, were, they started out by talking about the lobby for palm oil. That they were, they were, they were, the Americans were sending a lot of money to lobby some people on palm oil in Malaysia and Indonesia. I said, wow, that must... So I now went on the internet to look at the figures and so on. Anyway, so, but I will give the government credit for school feeding. In going around the entire country, I saw that indeed those, those, that food was getting up till now. At least from primary one to primary three, they're getting the food. The problem that... And why I was laughing was that when I got to Zamfara State and Katsina State and Kebi State, 
I realized that a lot of the children went to school just to take the food and leave because there were no teachers. Okay? Now, in many instances also, even the empower teachers will tell you, um, I said, how many, how many, uh, the, the, the most number of teachers I saw in any school, especially in the north of Nigeria, were two teachers for the entire school. Right? So, they will tell you that they have an empower person, but it doesn't come. And we know the deal on the empower. People who got the empower, because it was done in a rush, People who called the empire, like people who had other jobs and just did that one as a deal. And it's, it's not today. When I was serving in 1991 in Calabar, Cross River State, we had a lot of coppers who had four jobs. They, they, they were enrolled, they, they, were, they are there in Ministry of Works, Ministry of Water, they free, but they will have one private company that they go and serve. So they, they, the private person always looks out for you. Where is this person? Where is the copper? So you go there. By the end of the month, you go through all these ministries right. and collect them. So what you do is you share the money. So, so, yeah. so, so you see, the point is also that, of course, no government is totally bad. On school feeding, the intention is good, but the implementation to ensure what they actually wanted yeah. is not just taking those uh, students' We, we, need, to, we need to close now, but I, I, I'll put you on the spot. Is what actually, uh, do you think that this Buhari government can perform magic in the second term? I think I can only pray for them. The way things are going, I don't think so, but... I can only pray for them. You see, like I said before, we've gone beyond the level of okay. criticizing. We know that governance is not very easy to do. However, we can only, we can only wish them well. But from what we have seen so far, and the kind of right. hungry lions around him in their APC, they won't let that man succeed. Your, your, your final that. word the, the from magic, you. The final magic, word. The magic is being performed already. You, we, 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 you have, you've accepted that we came out of a recession. The, the economy is being diversified. We are, looking, we are looking at, we have stalled the production. I mean, we have uh, given momentum to production of rice in this country. We are producing most of the food we feed. All right. You know? We, we're out of you time, know? Mr. Akinshi. Yeah. Uh, Nigerians will be watching, yeah. and they will be waiting for the magic, okay? Definitely. Uh, yeah. And I wish your party the best, and the nation the best. Oh, Thank oh, you so much, Mr. Ani Akinshi, chairman of the Buhari Media Organization. Mr. Tokwe Fashwa, good to see you again after the election we got. Thank you so much for coming on the <laughs> I show. I for some real go. Congrats. Well, you know. this, these <laughs> folks are very good friends. Uh, they say they are brothers, too. <laughs> but that's our show for today. Coming live from Abuja, studio in the nation's capital. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye-bye.